Good morning, everyone. Today is December 26, 2017, and an exciting day. Today I'm going to talk about our beloved Archangel Gabriel. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to do me a real big favor, and that is to like and share. Um, we have so much that we want to share with the universe, with everyone. And I am so blessed. I have so many blessings. I just can't even begin to tell you how many. But anyway, um, before we go into ourselves, we need to go into our inner temple, which is ourselves. And leave who you were at the door and enter who you are now. And think about what we're going to talk about today. There's going to be a lot of, I'm going to be flipping around quite a bit today because the Archangel Gabriel uh, is the sign of Aquarius. He is our God of strength, our hero of God, and the angel of gentleness and knowing and fortitude and fearlessness. And guess what else? He is an abundance of joy. He brings to us. He's the messenger. He has so much that he wants to give to us. And we just have to be willing. And he and also just let you know, he comes from the fourth ray, which is the color for that ray or the vibration of white. And, of course, he's known for his visitation with Our Lady, our Holy Mother, also with Zechariah when he announced the baptism of John the Baptist. He gives us hope. And he can stand by you in so many ways. In receiving messages from spirit. Sometimes you're wondering, am I here? What am I hearing? Am I hearing it correctly? Well, of course you are. He governs. Gabriel, get this now. He governs telecommunications. That's radio, TV, remote uh, items. Now, when you stop and think about this, and here we are today, we're on Be Live TV, which is pretty cool. And we're going to create or celebrate our lives with him. We can manifest our deepest desires. We can cleanse our body and our minds, our homes, and our spirits. Now, when, when I talk about these things, when we talk about the cleansing and we ask, we ask spirit to help us. When we ask him to be in our body, in our mind, in our home. We, need, we know these things because they're in the spiritual realm. But when we talk about our spirits, the things that we cannot, most of us, some people, I can see them, but a lot of people can't see them. Uh, but they can feel them. They have sensitivities. He can help you if you channel in with them. And he can help you do the things that are necessary. If you're traveling and you're in a storm, you can ask him to be there with you. And he'll be there to protect you. If you're on the road traveling, he can be there to help you. And one of the things that I do, and I do this 
every time I get in my car is I ask for the Archangel Michael on my right, Saint Uriel in my front, Saint, and Archangel Gabriel on my left, Archangel Raphael to my back, and the Christ power, the white light of Christ over my head to protect me and those around me. When I'm out in the world, I do that. Um, whenever I have to go someplace that's strange to me and I'm not familiar, but I, I do that when I get up in the morning. I, I, you know, it's like, okay, guys, I don't go. I don't go anyplace without them. And I choose that. I also choose my what angels come around me uh, and spirits. I ask them specifically. And then uh, it's just the way it is with me. But you can do that too. Because today I'm going to try to share with you the fun things that I do with spirit. And it just makes life so much easier. I'm going to tell you about, because he can help us to communicate with our unborn children. And I'm going to give you a little story behind that. That when I had my first child, um, I felt in the, the quickening in the very beginning of the pregnancy. Then I didn't feel anything. Well, now it's time for the birth. And my mother is anxiously asking me questions and saying, well, Connie, how is the baby moving? Is things Are things going with the baby? How are you feeling? And I said, oh, wow. I, golly, mom. I said, you know, I haven't felt anything. The baby hasn't moved. Well, that struck a chord with my mama because she had three stillborn babies. And when that happened to her, she um, all just, you know, first thing she thought was, oh, Lord, my baby, my daughter is going to have a stillborn child because she thought because of no movement there. But during my pregnancy with this little one, I would just hug my tummy and sometimes I would sing to her and um, tell her just what a beautiful baby she was going to be and and that I loved her and we were just going to be a good team. Well, you know, and mother saying, well, I think we should go, you know, because it was close to my time. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I said, oh, my gosh, Miss mom, we better. She said, I think we should go to the hospital. And I said, well, I think we better. My water just broke. So off we go. And of course, I ended up with a beautiful little baby girl. And the same thing with my second child. Now, this one was a 24. It was different. She was totally different. And you ask anybody if she was when from the quickening, that child moved 24 seven for the for the nine months that she was in me. I knew I had a child in there. And you know what? She and and she came out fast. There was no questions asked. That girl was ready to come. And um, fast delivery. Everything was fast. And um, I think Christine is that's the way she lives her life. She's a, <laughs> she does everything quickly and fast. And that's just what I love about her. And um, but she is. You know, and I did the same thing with her that I did with my first baby. And so when we uh, ask for that communication uh, from Gabriel, because he gave Mary, he visited her. He told her that she was going to be the mother of our Jesus. So, you know, we have we can think like we can ask for that divineness we're because why we are the spark we are the stardust we are able to and our oneness our i am the presence i am and god is within me and so when i hear his voice 
and I hope you will feel this too when you hear him. His voice will fill you with peace and joy. And like at night even, um, if you're sitting in, you can have some moonlight shine into your home at night. That's his way of letting you know his presence and that he's there and he's sending you blessings. And with that, um, all you have to do is ask him. Just asking. He'll be there for you. I ask for his guidance and assistance. And I'll say to him, please help me. And then I explain to him. Or you can do this with any spirit that you feel comfortable with and know that you're, if you explain what your needs are, your master, your own master, because we have five that are in our own personal realms, that will help you get what you need. And then when I explain what my needs are, then I give thanks. I thank you for your love and for being in my life. We all have our part of the life streams and attracted to us from here in the earthly realm. And in getting the feeling that, you know, when we think about life in this realm, and then what, what about when it's over? And you say to yourself, getting the feeling that death is the end. Death is not the end. Reality, really. Now, reality is going to strike here in a minute. Get ready. Because it's our conscious ascension. When we are getting ready to go to the other side, we're going to go to a higher ascension. Is an ultimate victory of all of our endeavors. When we get over on the other side, we're going to see what we're going to see. We're going to see our book of life. All the lives before us, our consciousness will wake up and be shown. The ascension flame will endeavor to show us. The fourth ray is sending out right now that ascension flame. It's trying to wake us up to the fact that once you finish this earthly life, these were all lessons that you agreed to in the very beginning. The very beginning. You said when you were coming in, oh, you were so excited. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do it. And then you got sidetracked or you did this or you did that. And, oh, well, I got off on this journey. You may, you're going down the road and you say, okay, oh, no, I got to take a detour. You take the detour, but you come back on. Because you know you have certain things that you have to accomplish. That's what you agreed to. And um, so we have everlasting life and the joy of knowing that service. We are a service here on earth. And so when you're thinking about things and you see somebody um, that's maybe having a difficult time with a grocery cart or, or whatever you happen to be, you reach out and you help the individual. You don't just say, oh, pass by and say, well, well, isn't that a sad thing? No, you reach out and you help them. And that when you sit in the shed, I like this where you, when you sit in the shadow, when you sit in your shadow, there that your heart beats. And that is the fire of immortality. The light of God never fails. 
it contain it contains within itself the power to redeem to transmute to harmonize and to purify and to heal and to supply and to regulate every condition even with the speed of our thoughts it's there he knows or he is known as the archangel of resurrection it helps it helps us makes our heart glad when he is willing to in any way it does make me feel glad when and happy when i know that he is flashing his white light across me and across the whole world it's not just me it's everybody it's just that we got to wake up the consciousness for the seeking of the souls who've been caught in the messes of what humanity has created that we we can't help that it's just here sometimes when we forget that the mastery of the god domain which is what well, is it's externalized by every life stream and he is asked by the father of light to pressure the all of his flame to all of us we are so blessed to have that and it's so exciting to know that all that exists no other reason for no other reason is to achieve our god self our god mastery in this lifetime to ex externalize that nature of our father our mother god within us because you are each and every one of us are the temple of god within you are the temple within religion is not a matter of ceremony alone it is a matter of our daily and hourly living gabriel brings to our consciousness a conviction that is merely a matter of accepting the perfection of your presence the beauty of that holy christ self so that it, it it can externalize in every cell and atom in our being and gabriel is speaking into our hearts to remember him call forth that which seems dead within you to live to the light of god the youth the whatever it is that you need the sight of god the hearing of god the beauty of god the love of god the all empowering nature of god is alive within you and there is an amber in your hearts or you would not be in your physical body you just wouldn't and when i think about this all encompassing of what gabriel has for us and what he's done and accepting our imperfections and looking and trying to accept our holy christ self he is speaking into our hearts to remember him so when you think about the dying process when we were born we were born to die but that doesn't mean in the dead sense within you you live everything that we do all the processing that's out there uh the love of god or your creator whatever source how you have to relate there is a 
and I said this before, there's a spark in each and every, we are all part of the stardust. All the power of the almighty and that he breathes upon us in this fourth ray. And when spirit to come now forth that you, when you sleep, when you stand revealed in the mastery and be God free, that's what it is. And when, when I'm processing and doing things and I ask, knowing the history of Gabriel, knowing that he didn't, he, he talked to Muhammad in regards to the Quran. He enlightened Buddha to be full of the truth that he was himself, the God power, the externalized to expand the glory of the kingdom. Whose kingdom? Of his kingdom. We are our own kingdom. Because Jesus, and Jesus taught us that, the kingdom is within. And so when I find things happening in my life, I always go within. And I try to find, and I'm always searching. I'm always trying to find the right avenue to go down and trying to, in my little mind, think about how can I master my universe how can I make my situation better or somebody else's? Uh, I have a friend that shares with me, shared with me that they play music in the senior centers for the seniors. What a wonderful service that is. A blessedness that they bring joy to someone who's in their last hours, last days, and knowing that they can uplift that spirit. So music is so wonderful. Now this morning, of course, when I set up my space, my sacred space, and did my saging and stuff, I thought to myself, you know, and I play, I oh, I love the song, uh, different songs, but Come Holy Spirit. I want them to be in my home. I want them to be with me. And so I play that type of music. Why? Because it makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel good. So you have to do what makes you feel good. Maybe you like to listen to uh, an opera and uplift your spirits. Well, that's fine. Some people, oh, I can't stand that. Well, then do what fits you. If you like country western, if you like rhythm and blues, whatever lifts your spirit up and listen. You have to be you have to listen to the messenger because that's what Gabriel's all about. He wants us to tap in. He's sending that fourth ray of light across the universe. And God, isn't that exciting? I'm getting so excited. I'm, I might be able to fly right out of here today. But anyway, um, I have to, I want to share today with you also that my day yesterday was a wonderful day. My daughter Christine came for Christmas and uh, we just, we had the best day we've had in a long, long time. And we just uh, laughed and had a few tears and just thought this was the greatest thing. And you know what? And we did talk about spirit because we can't, we, we in this household have to acknowledge and talk about spirit and what it's doing in our lives because it's part of us. And that's what I want to share with you today is that if you're in doubt, don't be in doubt anymore. Reach down and, and grab a hold of your boots and say, I can do this. I know there's a way. I know I can make things better. And I know if I tap in to this source, 
the source of your inner kingdom, how you want it to be, your life will be better. Um, I'm, I'm excited about some the things that I'm, I'm looking to 2018 and I'm trying to, you know, think about what am I going to talk about this year? Because last year I talked about the I am. Well, listen, the I am is, is so, it's just there. You are the I am. I wish I, I don't know how to explain all that to you folks, but you are part of, you are God. And I know that sound, somebody said, what, Connie, how can you say that? Well, it's pretty easy because it just it just feels right. It just feels right to know that my source who gives me the ability to be able to share. And I do sh thank Star Nations for that uh, to be able to. I never thought I could be had no idea in my life that I'd be doing something like this and sharing with you folks the knowing that you can tap in. Not everybody is a medium. Not everybody can give messages. Oh, that's a, that's a whole nother show by itself. Simply because of the fact that is a tremendous responsibility. When I do a reading for someone, oh boy, I want that crystal. I mean crystal clear because what I may be saying to that individual could change their life forever. And the, I don't want that. I want every message to be crystal. And my authority on this is I don't allow. I tell my master teachers, do not allow anything of any negative nature to be even present when that is going on. You set the sacred space. You have the respect. You have to discern. You have to discern because in this lifetime, you know what areas of town that you do not go to because you've been taught that. Now, when we talk about the spirit side and you say, well, I'm going to just venture right out into that. Well, you better put your brakes on. Because there are stop signs, there's caution signs, there's yield signs, there's, they're all out there. There's just as much negativity on the spiritual side as there is in the physical world. And we have to be attuned. To, we have to be aware of that. We have to be the disciple of who we are and knowing that when we step into the Christ consciousness to know that when he gave us these abilities and said, you may do these things. You can do these things, but this, you have to discern what you're doing. You must, that is an absolute. And so moving forward, I don't know where I'm going with this, but anyway, it's just here it is as you're getting it. <laughs> but anyway, I just want you to know that don't be afraid. Just be good at, being a good citizen, doing good for other people, reaching out and helping those that are in need. Uh, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be with financial needs. It could maybe you hear somebody that needs some help and you say, well, what can I do? Is there something make up, make that phone call and say, is there something I can do to help? And those are the things that we need to be doing. And um, I want to just go back and talk a little bit here and talk about uh, and, and I want you to think about Gabriel this because this is his time. On December 27th, 1953, he channeled into a gentleman by the name of Thomas Prince. And so um, I was given a book, this book, where all these seven archangels uh, 
And I and I looked at the and I the other day I was looking at the book and I thought, oh, I, I wrote the date, my name in the book and the date, 1986. Now I've had this book in my possession all this time. Sometimes I'd pick it up, read it, think about it. Mmm, okay. But now here I am. I'm sharing this information with you. Now, this information came into the ether. Can you imagine it? December 27th, tomorrow, 1953. I was 10 years old. Oh, my God. How exciting is that? It is wonderful. But now, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour. And um, I want to show you what I have today. And this is the Prayers of Incantation, Incantations of Light by Denise. I love this book. I have to tell you, when I got this, I just sat down. And as I read, I cried. Because I could feel the essence of our Holy Mother. And when she gave this information to Denise, it struck my chord in my heart. And I thought, oh, Mother, you are here. You are with us all. And we're all part of each other. We are all here in the light. And I'm going to, and I don't know if I mentioned to you that Gabriel, um, his symbol is water. And um, his mantra, his, the daily mantra for him is, I am a divine child of God. Fear has no place with me. I have no fear anymore. But I want to read to you page 106, if you have the book, because this is how I want to end my show today. I am. I stop to ask myself, what am I? A silent voice deep within me answered, I am a child of the light. I am the light. I am a child of the one love. I am that love. I am a child of the stars. I am the stars. I am here to shine. And I am here on earth to shine my light, my love, my stardust. And I am here to shine. I want you all to share this. I'm sharing this with you. That's, that's how I feel. And I want you to feel that, that stardust. And I want to leave that with you today and blessings be and thank you, Star Nations. And Denise is coming up next. So please, in your time, give yourself the love that you need and God bless and blessings be. Amen.